reflexes and uh, you have to have uh, the proper hammer like this and then uh, let's examine for example his biceps reflex and this is a swinging movement you don't do like this a swinging movement and you can see that his reflex is brisk let's do the brachioradials and you can see the reflex and we, you put his hand up arm like this and you come from the back and we will do the triceps reflex and you can see that it is happening now if we move to the lower limbs we can do the knee reflex as he's sitting like this uh, and we come like this and we hit the knee so we got a knee reflex like this or you can do it while he's lying down please lie on the bed okay and we come and take his knee and flex it a little bit and then look at the tendon here and we do that and we get the reflex after we finished this we move to do the ankle reflex and we put his uh, leg like this across relax relax please and we have to do a little bit of dorsiflexion here relax and then come with this and we get a reflex like this so this is the anchor reflex we can get the anchor reflex in a different way can you need come down come down down and climb up on the bed again with your knees put your knees up put your hands on the wall and this is a good technique for testing both uh, 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 jerks at the same time here we are it's okay see see how his reflex is happening thank you uh, quite good now I ask the patient to lie down um, I'm going to tap over your uh, tendon uh, it will not hurt you put the upper limb in 120 degree press over the biceps tendon look to the muscle and tap same here 120 degree expose the muscle press over the tendon and tap the brachioradial is tested also in 120 degree by putting fingers over the brachioradial tendon and checking the reflex triceps on 90 degree uh, support by the wrist uh, on the, uh, support the wrist check for the triceps reflex Check. Uh, check. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to come down here and look at Becca's knees. And in, in somebody Becca's age, the reflexes should be very easy to get and having difficulty getting. Okay. And interestingly, when you get that, it's it's almost um, a a dud type feeling. But that's not specific for this condition. You can see that with the neuropathy. You can see that with somebody with guillain barre syndrome, for example. And if I come down here, it's the same thing. The hammer just kind of bounces off and doesn't give the normal, normal uh, response. Can I take your shoe off? So this is just a template, and I'm just going to break it. It's a little bit sharp. So that's about the knee hammer, how to hold the knee hammer. Again, we'll have to do the reflexes. Next slide, please. Upper limb, the three reflexes that we will be doing. I'm going to demonstrate the upper limb, I'm going to demonstrate the lower limb. The three reflexes that we'll be doing will be the biceps, the triceps, the brachioradialis. So let's start with the biceps. Before that, when do we use the pointed end, when do we use the broad end? There's some simple rules of thumb. If the tendon is narrow, use the broad end. The two examples where we use the broad end is brachioradialis, and the tendocalcaneus, tendoacanes, because the tendons are narrow. If you use the narrow end, you're likely to miss it. That's why you use the broad end. Biceps is also a narrow tendon, but biceps is an only exception where you don't tap on the tendon directly. You keep your thumb on it. 
and we'll be watching that. My says there are several ways of doing it. One is in the sitting position. Okay, the patient is sitting. Chanel, so what I would like you to do is keep your hand very relaxed on my hand. Absolutely, ask the person to keep the full weight of the hand absolutely relaxed on your own hand. Patient should not be stiff or tense. Relaxed. Feel for the biceps tendon and you will be able to feel it very easily. You will be able to feel it in the cubital fossa. It's very easy. Once you feel the biceps tendon, give a gentle pressure on the biceps tendon. In fact, if you're right about it, you will feel the positions of the brachial, the brachial artery right medial to that. I can feel it. So the biceps tendon, I've given a little traction. Now what I'm going to do is, because the area is very limited here, I cannot use the broad portion. I have to use the narrow portion, but I have localized it with my thumb. I'm going to tap my thumb with the pointed end of the knee hammer. Are we clear? So this is how we will do. Keep it relaxed, absolutely. Did you watch the muscle contracting? You can stand up, right? So line. Next, the triceps. There are three ways of doing it. The nice method is hang the limb out to dry. This is called hanging the limb out to dry, like you're hanging clothes, you know? So I have made her hand hang as if I'm drying it on a clothes line. So keep it relaxed, absolutely. Put the full weight of your hand on my hand. Yes, that is important. And you feel it just above the olecranon process. And you tap this area. There. <laughs> that is the triceps reflex. Do it again. There is another one. Keep it relaxed. Keep your full weight. Ask the patient to be absolutely relaxed and keep the full weight of his or her hand on your hand. Usually patients will be stiff. You will not get the reflex. Okay, in the exams, even if you don't get the reflex, we are not judging you on that. I'm going to watch your procedure, how you're doing it, whether you're doing it the right way. Keep the full weight of your hand on me. I should be able to feel the weight relaxed. Oh, yeah. That is the crisis. That is one way. The other way is if the person is lying down, you can just ask the patient to flex and you can tap there. So that is another way to do it. So patient lying, patient sitting. And the third one is the brachioradialis. Remember I said brachioradialis, the tendon is very narrow, narrow. and it is inserted on the radial styloid process. The radial styloid process, you can feel it just above the anatomical snuff box. Remember the anatomical snuff box? Mm, where you take your salt before taking your shirt for limb. So, so feel the radial styloid process first. The, the brachioradialis is inserted on the radial styloid process. So you have to go approximately one inch above that. We have to use the broad end because it's a very narrow. If I try to do it with, I may miss, you see? So I'll use the broad end. So hold the hand in a mid-prone position because this is the position in which the brachioradialis works best. And go slightly above that and tap. You can see the contraction of the radio, brachioradialis there. That is how you test for brachioradialis. Again, do not forget to do it on the other side. Hold it, support in the mid-prone position, feel the radial styloid process, and tap. That is the that is the brachioradialis tendon reflex. So we have done the three reflexes, biceps, triceps, brachioradialis. Next one, please. I'm going to do the knee, ankle, hip, both little backs. One way to do the knee is with the patient sitting. Give a gentle upward, keep it absolutely relaxed. Give a little stretch of the tendon. Give a little stretch of the tendon. And again, this is the place where you use the broad end. Why? Because the tendocalcaneus, tendocalcaneus is pretty narrow. There. Similarly on the other side, don't forget. So we'll watch whether you're using the right side, right end, and whether, again, elicitation is not the important thing. I want to see whether you're doing the procedure correctly or not. Similarly, okay. Again, give a, no, keep it relaxed, absolutely. Patients will try to tense their limbs, I'm telling you. You have to repeatedly tell them, Mr. The budget to keep your limb relaxed, absolutely, absolutely relaxed. You give gentle dorsiflexion to make the tendon a little taut. And there. If you do it the right way, you will get it, 100%. It's the, when people are not giving the proper instruction to the patient, that's why you're not able to elicit it. Suppose the person is lying down. There's another way to do it. Do we have place for you to lie down? Or there's no place for you? Yeah. Or you can just lie down. Okay. 
my God, people bring their whole house here. That's a, that's a yeah. If the person is lying down, there's another way to do it. Watch it. Okay. Yes, Cross, can you cross your leg over the other? Keep it relaxed, absolutely. Cross one leg over the other. Keep it relaxed. Keep it relaxed. <laughs> Again, give a little, give a little dorsiflexion to tauten this tendon. And tap. Keep it relaxed, absolutely. Look at his arm, Abed. There. They aren't letting him relax. You can see it contracting. So what do you look for here? This leg. Well, you're seeing contraction of the oh, I didn't see that. triceps okay. in the surrey. Similarly, to the other side, can you cross over? Keep it relaxed, absolutely. Give a little gentle dorsiflexion. You don't do it, I'll do it. <laughs> Keep it gentle dorsiflexion and tap. Note, I did not use my shoulder or my, I just used my wrist. It should flow freely. There, that is. Now I'll tell you what is clonus. Clonus is grade five reflex. We used to, nowadays they call it clonus. Can you sit down? Suppose a person has got a very exaggerated reflex. Suppose a person has got a very exaggerated, you can hang your leg down. If the person has got a very exaggerated reflex, so exaggerated that even by touching the tendo of Algenius, it moves very briskly, I can elicit something called clonus. And I'll show it to you how to do it. That happens when the person has got a corticospinal, dense corticospinal tract lesion. Very high degree of deep tendon reflex. I just rapidly dorsiflex his foot like this. You keep it relaxed. I just rapidly, even now I elicit it a little bit. I rapidly do it and it will start flapping a few times. That is called clonus. That is, some books call it grade 5. So this was the tendo calcaneus. Now I'm going to demonstrate the next slide. Oh, it's in here. The knee jerk reflex. So that's normal when it flaps? No, it should not. That's exaggerated. Average normal is 2 plus. 3 plus is mild, is brisk. Four is very brisk and five is clonus. Are you the worst in your category? Okay. Knee jerk. Again, the procedure, watch very carefully. You will have to, I think I'm going to use her for this because I'll show you. This is the place where you might have to do the gender six maneuver. What is the gender six maneuver? Remember? You have to ask the person to clench. You can see it in the previous slide. There. No, the ones before that. There. The top picture. Hook the fingers. Pull them apart and ask the person to clench his feet. That way you're increasing the gamma discharge. So we might ask you, okay, let's say this person has got a very weak reflex. How will you exaggerate it? You will ask the person to, so we'll demonstrate both in this now. Okay. So, uh, can you hook your fingers in them? Like this. Pull it apart hard and clench your teeth. Pull Your teeth. Clench your teeth and pull your fingers apart. Yes. This is the way we have increased the gender six maneuver. So, okay, I'm going to tell you when to do that. Now, can I ask you to cross your right leg over your left knee? Yes, first step. Again, tell the patient to relax. Many patients will try to keep it stiff. They are invariably stiff when a doctor is examining them. That's called the white coat syndrome. So, relax, absolutely relax. The leg should be hanging freely. Now you ask the person to do gender six maneuver. Let's assume that she's got a very weak reflex and I won't increase it. Can you do that, please? Feel the tendo, uh, sorry, the ligamentum patellae between these two bones. Which are the two bones? Patella. The patella here and the tibial tuberosity here. The patella here and the tibial tuberosity. Exactly midway between the two is the ligamentum patellae and that's exactly where we are going to hit. Keep it relaxed, absolutely. Again. Okay, now relax, release this. So now I've removed the gender six maneuver. I'm just demonstrating it to you. Relax. See the difference? It was there, but it was milder. Oh, wow. When she did the gender six, it became exaggerated. Yes? Do the other one. Can you cross over the other leg, please? Keep it relaxed. Keep it absolutely relaxed. You might have to spend a few seconds to tell the patient. Relax, relax. And when you tell them, they invariably they relax. In fact, even now. When I'm saying relax, I can feel her muscles are relaxing. Patients always tend to tense up. Okay. Feel the ligamentum patellae between these two bony prominences. The, the, the patella here, tibial tuberosity here. Can all of you see? Okay. You just have to do it once very gently, it will happen. Now please do that. Gender six maneuver. 
Of course, patient does not know its gender receipt. You'll have to explain to the patient what it is. To go, Dave. What's that, a drum, drumstick? <laughs> so I'm just going to test the um, reflexes in your, your leg here. Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to do one up here for me. Might jump your leg a little bit. Yes. To check deep tendon reflexes, I distract the patient by having them hook flexed fingers while I test the reflexes. The knee jerk tests L2, 3, and 4, but primarily L4. The ankle jerk tests S1. L5 is the most common lumbar radiculopathy we'll see in practice, but it has no measurable deep tendon reflex. Which brings us to, earlier in my exam, I performed the sitting straight leg raise while distracting the patient with my reflex exam. The sitting straight leg raise is much easier to perform and interpret correctly. A patient with a 